And I want to help you get clarity because this month we're covering how to eliminate confusion in your business. Right? A lot of people have this, this confusion. What do I do every day? How do I grow my business? Who do I call on? What do I say? How do I follow up? How do I work them through a pipeline? How do I extract referrals? In this system today we're talking about, we're going to cover every one of those. Because I want to get real clear about why you need a selling system. And why you need a selling system is because the purpose of any business is to generate a customer. Everybody with me? So you need a strategy on how every day you're going to wake up and generate new money. New customers. Okay? When I was a basketball coach, and this is very relevant to the story, I had a play sheet. And on that play sheet was the plays that I was going to run every day, every game, to try to beat my opponents. Okay? The way I calculated that play sheet is I would study the competition and I would try to find weakness or vulnerability in my competitor and I would, I would design my plays to attack that vulnerability. Okay, I want you to think about this. So I'd look and I'd say we're playing Blackman and Blackman has a small uh, point guard. We have a 5'9 point guard. We can post our 5'9 point guard up against their 5'4 point guard. That's a vulnerability. We're stronger in this area than they are. They do a poor job of helping on screens. We're going to run these plays to generate, right? So I had this play sheet, and I would go into the game, <clears throat> and I would look at, and I would call the plays in order. They were already set. And I would go play one. We would run it, and we would chart it. Did it work or did it not work? Then we come to the next one, play two. We would run it. Did it work or did it not work? And we would do this the whole first half. I would go in at halftime and I would say, which plays worked? And my assistant coach would say two, three, and seven worked 80% of the time. One, three, one, four, and five worked 20% of the time. And I would say, throw it out, throw those out. I would go back in the second half and only ran, run the plays that work. Everybody with me? Well, I got into the business world, so that's how we won games. And 76% of the time, we won because we, we ran our plays. So I get into the business world, and I start coaching business people, and I would say, how do you get customers? And you should have heard some of the answers people gave me. They would be like, boy, that is a, whew, that's a good question, coach. That is a, let's see. Let me think about that for a minute. Uh, well, we do a little bit of marketing. I do a little bit of networking, I do a little bit of Facebook, I'm, I'm referrals, everybody always said referrals because that's the easiest thing to say. And I would say, look, we need to get clear, clear. I need to know your number one strategy for generating new customers. This is the best strategy you have. It yields the most return on getting customers. And I need to know how much time you're spending doing that and they didn't know. They didn't know what their number one strategy was. And I would say, I need to know what your number two strategy is and how that works in getting customers. Everybody follow what I'm saying? I need to know your number three strategy. Typically, people had less than three to five strategies. And I would ask this question. I would say, Vicki, is it working for you? And I'd say, are you getting enough leads to generate enough business to hit the goals that you set for yourself. And almost every time it was what? No. Not getting enough leads. Well, that very quickly told me you don't really have a strategy to go out and generate customers, do you? So what you have is what we're talking about this month in Monster Producer is you have a randomness in motion. You show up during the day like a tornado, and you just were all over the place, okay? And you don't have clarity, like what am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to call on? How am I, what am I supposed to say, okay? 
So basically, your business looks like this. You have a good month, and then you have a bad month. You have a good month, and you have a bad month. What you should be doing are strategies that are in cohesion with each other, that are working in tandem. So when you hear me say today, every day I work a hit list, I work a farm club, I work my top 25, I work my new clients. So every day I'm in a rhythm and a pattern of trying to generate new business. And if you said, look, you got one minute, coach, explain it to me. The legacy selling system is a calculated and coordinated attack on new customer generation. Everybody see that? It is an offensive attack. It is a system. Okay? It is a system to go out and generate new business. Okay? And that system is comboed with the monster planner. So if I'm working my monster planner, it's telling me what to do. This is my hit list for today, which means I'm calling on these three or four people. This is my farm club today. These are people I'm trying to close. These are my three biggest people I need to call on. You follow what I'm, what I'm, what I'm getting here? The selling system is tied to how you plan and map out your days. Okay, so when you see these categories in the beginning of the planner, these categories are showing you which categories I'm using. It's like a little glossary of terms. Shows you what is a hit list, what is a farm club. Okay, so basically I, I created or invented the legacy selling system about 10 years ago to solve the problem of, of business people that didn't know how to go out and generate leads. That's what we're going to discuss today, okay? Now, I'm going to start by asking you this question. I believe that money only changes hands when problems are solved. So to sell anything in the market, you first have to figure out what problem are you solving and for whom you would like to solve it for. Because if I said, Tracy, I want you to have a hit list, I want three to five people on there every single day, she's going to come up with names. They may be past clients, they may be consumers, they may be people in our friend circles, they may be strategic partners. And she's going to come up with those names and say, I'm going to be calling on these people today to see if we can generate some business. Then I would ask her, are they blue gills or are they blue marlins? Blue gills are little bitty fish, blue marlins are big fish. Okay, so if I'm a home inspector, I could go out and get one home from one person or I could form a partnership to pick up 100 homes. Everybody follow what I'm saying here? Okay, so I want you to write down right now, let's get clear, what problem are you really solving for people? And for whom would you like to solve it? And it may be a demographic, it may be a group of people, it may be people that make a certain amount of money. Who would you like to solve this problem for? Because this is very, very critical to this equation. Okay, now, let me tell you why this is critical. You're new to town. This is a great example. They just moved their business to town. They have a landscaping company. They have a home base in Memphis. They have moved to Murfreesboro. How many people do you know in Murfreesboro? Ten people. So I tell him, 
He needs to go out into the marketplace and call on people. Who is he going to call on? He could call on everybody. He's going to call on those ten, which would be what we call low-hanging fruit. Okay? But what he needs to do is plug into a network. So he did. Monster Producer. Monster Producer has 585 people in this program. You know what I said? You pick up that Monster Directory and you call every single person in this program and you say this, we believe in doing business with other people that believe the same things we do. We believe in doing business with other monster producers. We're new into town. We do complete landscaping. We do this. I don't know if you're satisfied with your current landscaping company or not, but if you're not, we'd love to at least just come out and give you a free evaluation. You know how many people, I was the very first one. You know what I said? I'm not satisfied with my current landscaping. My yard looks awful. The people I'm paying don't know what they're doing. They don't communicate with me. You got your first customer in me. All he had to do was ask me. Now, there's going to be other people say, you know what? I believe in doing business with other people in Monster Producer too. Why don't you come out and give us a look? See, that's a hit list. Most of the people in Monster Producer are pro progressive people. They're starting to make money or they're making money. You understand what I'm saying? They live in nice subdivisions. They hang around smart people. They're living progressive. That's his hit list. And he's got 500 of them to start with. He, if I moved to Memphis, you know what I would do? I was just in Memphis yesterday. I would go to Memphis. I'd say, who all do I know in Memphis? And I'd pick up the phone and call those people. Hey, I'm new to Memphis. Here's what I'm doing. I'm going to start small with a group of people. I'm doing business coaching in the, in the city of Memphis and in West Tennessee. I'm going to be doing a class on this date. Who can you invite to that class? And I'd start off with three or four people, and I'd say, you bring three or four people with you. Next thing you know, I got 10. Next thing you know, I got 15. Next thing you know, I got 70. 70 people paying $500 a month, $350,000, $35,000 a month, 35,000 times 12. Do the math. It's 400000 a year. Surely to goodness I could find just 70 people in Memphis. You understand what I'm saying here? See, we complicate things. What we're doing is we've got to break it down. So when I'm telling you who, do you, who, who, do you who do you want to solve problems for and what problems do you solve, this is very important. Because when I tell you to start putting your hit list together, most people show up at the office and wait on something to happen. I hope something happens today. I hope a lead comes in. I hope emails come in. I hope somebody over at the bank sends me something. I hope something happens. That is not a good strategy. I am very intentional. And I wake up and I say, you know what? I'm going after that exit in Manchester. And how do I get in front of those people? And I'm going after that Weikert. And I'm going after this EXP group. And I'm going after this group. Everybody follow me? And I just put them right down on my list. And, I, and every day I figure out, who, who do I know? How can I get in front of those people? How can I help them? What do I say? See what I'm saying? And then I'm trying to attract those people to me. And, I, and then once they come into the system, now they go into a cycle, and that cycle is how are we following up with those people? So until you have this, how many of you have ever used a selling system before? See, to me, buying leads is not a selling system. And a lot of people consider that a selling system, like we buy leads, you know, and that's our system. Well, I would never rely on that system, okay? I don't mind if you market and spend money and people call in, that's part of marketing and advertising. But what if you didn't have a marketing budget? And there is no marketing budget and it's just you going to get customers. What do you do then? You follow what I'm saying? If I was a State Farm insurance agent, I wouldn't sit in my office and wait on people to call. I'd call everybody that I know. And I'd say, hey, I'm a new State Farm agent. Here's what I believe, here's why I believe it, here's what we're gonna do. Here's how we're gonna do it different. I don't know if you're satisfied with your current insurance agent or not, but I'd love to sit down with you and show you what we can do for you. You see what I'm saying? I would target people. That's called a hit list, okay? So until you get clear on, on what problems you solve, you really go out into the marketplace and you just sell a commodity. So I just want you to remember this. The purpose of your business is to create a customer. The purpose of your business is to create a customer. So every day, we need to be spending time creating customers, okay? I've dedicated two hours a day from 9 to 11 every morning to prospecting. And I say two hours a day, we're going to prospect. Now, if I can't personally prospect, then I need to have my team prospecting for two hours a day. Okay, because a lot of times I'm out at events and I'm speaking and I can't be the one that does that. But let me tell you something. When I am in this office and it is me, I'm sitting right there beside my team members and I'm on the phone calling on people. You follow what I'm saying? All day long, I promote, I sell. I'm doing the exact same things I'm telling them to do. You follow what I'm saying? So the purpose of the business is to create a customer. And the reason this is critical is because here's how this should work. You started with a number at the beginning of this year that you wanted to hit in a 12-month cycle. 
That's called a dominant focus. You backtrack that focus into a quarterly number, into a monthly number, and then, it, and then we have to get clear. This is where we get confused. What do I do today? Okay? What do I need to do today? What do I need to do right now? What do I need to do from 9 to 11? What do I need to do from 11 to 1? What do I need to do? Okay? Now, what we do is we call that what we do high value activity. So I got to get clear about something. Here's my dominant focus. Somebody give me a goal. A goal that you have for this year. Million, million dollars of revenue, right? So you want to generate a million dollars of revenue. Okay? He wants 1 million. If I backtrack that into quarterly, what does it need to do? 250? 250 a quarter. Okay, so here's his quarterly go. We just finished quarter one. Then I'm going to backtrack it down to his monthly go. Where's my math? How much does he need to do per month? That, right? That's how, that's how much he needs to sell every 30 days. In revenue. Doesn't mean he's going to collect it. Means he's going to sell it. Okay, everything I'm talking about with you is what are you going to sell, not what are you going to collect. So then the question becomes, what does he need to be doing today? Because this is where people fall off the wagon. He needs to sell roughly, if we broke that down, he needs to sell 16000 and something per week. Everybody follow me? Now, when we get down to today, this is where the confusion comes in. He can't sell a million dollars today. He probably can't sell $250,000 today. He, he may not be able to sell $83,000 today. He may not be able to sell $16,000 in a day, although he could. But he can do something today that moves him closer to his weekly number, closer to his monthly number, closer to his quarterly, closer to that. What he does today we call high-value activity, HVAs. Okay? Now, I want you to look at the definition of a high-value activity. It is an activity that is a specific activity toward the dominant focus. It is a specific money-generating activity that is moving him closer to his goal. Okay? Now, let me give you some examples. For me, my high value activities look like this. I do showcase events, which means I do events that where we can enroll multiple people at one time. That's a high value of my time. Doesn't mean it's a high value of your time. It could be. I, do, I work a hit list every day, which is me calling on people or targets. I work a farm club every day, which means I am working people who have indicated interest and I'm trying to close them and overcome their objection. I'm spending time with my top clients we call that the top 25, and I'm spending time with current clients to try to get them to a better state, and I'm working on strategic partnerships. Those are my high-value activities. Okay? Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because I sit down at night, Antoinette, and here's what I say. What's the highest value of Coach Burt's time tomorrow that moves me closer to my dominant focus of hitting my monthly sales numbers. And I sit down and I map out my day. Well, there's five people on my hit list that I want to get in front of. There's three people in my farm club I'm trying to close. There's two of my biggest clients I want to spend time with. There's three new clients I want to spend time with. That constitutes my high value activity and my high value activity is always right here in the planner. Now, if you've got a small planner, which are the new ones, it, it asks you the question. It says, who are your top prospects today? Who is in your farm club today? Everybody you understand what I mean? So this is where all the money is made in the selling system. Okay? Now, when do I do this? I typically do it from 9 to 11. Is my dedicated time to prospecting. Okay, so look at, the, look at the number of strategies I'm using. But I got other strategies too. I'm not just using these strategies. 
I'm also going to do a Facebook Live and videos, and I'm going to work my database, and I'm going to do podcasts, and I'm going to do events. Look at all the strategies I'm using in a day to generate leads. I'm not using one strategy, I'm using multiple strategies. And they are coordinated and calculated with each other, okay? What questions do you have right now? So let's say you're really good with people and you say, look, I'm, I'm great one-to-one. -one. When I get face-to-face -face with people, I close deals. You know what I'm going to ask you? Pull out your calendar, Aaron, and show me how many face-to-face -face meetings you got this week. And if you only got two, some ain't right. You're telling me you're great face-to-face, -face, but you got no face-to-face -face meetings. Let's say Bill Taylor says, we sign up people the most when I get them in my place. And what we really should be doing every week is inviting 10 to 15 to 20 guests to come try it out. Today at Monster Producer, how many guests do we have? We probably had 10 to 15 people visiting the program today. Now, we could have taken 10 to 15 meetings, or we could have just get 10 to 15 people in a room at one time and try to sell them. Everybody, everybody with me? So my point to you is, what I see in a lot of people is they don't know what the high value of their time is, so they're out there just doing a bunch of low-value activity. They're busy, but they're not productive. Do you know that I flew out of the Murfreesboro Airport once? And I was going to a little town in Mississippi to speak on a little bitty Cessna airplane. And there were two people that meeted me, that, that meeted me, that met me at the Murfreesboro Airport and was handing out their business card. They were two real estate agents. Now, I don't know a whole lot, but I do know that the Murfreesboro Airport is not a high traffic airport. Now, why would they go to the Murfreesboro Airport and prospect and sit over there and hand out business cards to the four people that came through there? Right? Everybody with me? Now, here's the deal. You can't even get a big plane in the Murfreesboro Airport. It'd be one thing to go down to the private airport we're going to be going to tonight at the event where the big jets come into and people have a lot of money rolling in out of and prospect there. Prospecting at the Murfreesboro Airport, you see what I'm saying? Now, is that a high value or a low value of their time? I bet they went home and told their significant other, you know what I did? Honey, I worked all day long prospecting. See, you can prospect in ponds of people that don't have any money. You follow what I'm saying? You can say, I'm busy. Oh, I prospected all day long with people who don't have any money. You get what I'm saying? So what I do is I step back and I go, who has the money? Or as my buddy Cardone says, who's got my money? Because every dollar that is in your pocket started in the pocket of another person. You solved a problem for them. So if you're in the insurance business, which you are, and you came to me and said, what should I do? I said, it's just simple. I would start with the people in the millionaire club and the 25K level and the mega monsters. Those are the people paying the most money for coaching. They most likely have the most money in our program. They, they, somebody's doing their insurance. If I was going to call on anybody, I'd call on them first. What would I say? Hi, I'm Adam Tipton. We're both in Monster Producer. I don't know if you're satisfied with the per person who's handling your insurance right now, but I sure would like to sit down with you and, and spend some time with you to find out if I can serve you. Some of those people go, sure. Some of those people say, no, I'm not happy. Don't ever hear from an insurance guy. Pretty lousy. I'm overpaying. Next thing you know, he picks up a client. Does that make sense? So what I used to do is go out and just call on anybody, which is what I see a lot of people do. Just whoever wants to come in the door, come in the door. Now I'm very specific. I call on very specific people, okay? So for example, I'm, I'm now doing these big events for Remax where I'm doing national events for Remax. But I ask this question, can I get in front of the owners? How do I get in front of the owners while I'm in town? They didn't have me speaking to the owners, they had me speaking to the agents. I said, I wanna to speak to the agents, but since I'm already gonna be there, why don't we do a session for the owners too? Oh, that'd be great. Would you do that? I did the same thing with Exit the other day. How do I get in front of the top 60 owners? The real players. The real players making the real money. How do I get in front of them? Okay? Hit list. Follow what I'm saying? Hit list. So now instead of trying to get one person, I go after a bunch of people. Everybody follow me here. I'm looking at multiples. I'm, I'm not looking at one to one. I'm looking at how do I sign up everybody? Okay? So I'm getting clear about this. So, so how many of you feel like you're doing low value activity right now? This is activity you are doing 
as part of your day that has nothing, no thing, to do with you hitting that number. You're on the phone with people you don't need to be on the phone with. You're spending time with people you don't need to be spending time with. You're calling on people you don't need to be calling on. you got to get clear. This is what I'm doing every day. So my goal for you as your coach is to get you doing a minimum of three to five high-value activities every day. Okay? And I take vitamins to make me healthy and wealthy and wise. Okay? And I take some every day. Here's what I would tell you. The what makes your business healthy and wealthy wise is taking your vitamins. And you know what taking your vitamins is? Your little high value activities. So here's the deal I would make with, with myself. I don't stop working today until I get my high value activities done. Everybody follow me? I don't care if you do them from 8 to 9 in the morning. I don't care. When I'm on the way into work in the morning, could I be on the phone with people? Yes or no? Yes, when I'm on breaks, traveling from place to place, I'm texting people, I'm calling people, I'm shooting videos for people. These are high value activities. What I'm trying to do is just keep people in a forward posture. Okay? For some of you, recruiting is a high value of your time. For some of you, selling is a high value of your time. Okay? Let's go back to Bill Taylor. Bill Taylor owns Bushido School of Karate. He may say the highest value of my time is being out in the community, driving people in the door to my shop, promoting that's what the highest, one of the highest values of my time is. So I'm out in the world trying to pull people in. Everybody with me? Now, if I was a real estate agent or a mortgage originator or an insurance or a home inspector, it don't matter. What would I be doing? Everything I'm currently doing. Everything I'm currently doing, okay? So, so let me just stop right there and ask you this. Who are your blue marlins? I want you to, I want you to write down right now three to five big people who have real money that you need to be calling on. What demographic, what people, what group, who do you need to be calling on every day that should be on your hit list? Could be, I like to get it real specific, but you could put, you could put types of people. I like to get very specific, Go like I'm calling on these people. Okay, now, has everybody got the list of the, the kind of people that they want to they call on every day? Yes or no? All right, so I'm a real estate agent. Who could I be calling on every day? Okay, one is past clients. When's the best time to call? When's the best time to ask for a referral, by the way? Yeah, so, so when you're looking at the sales cycle, here's what I want you thinking. Every day I show up, here's the sales cycle. Number one, I got to create opportunity. Those are leads. Once I create a lead, I'm going to build rapport, do some discovery, share my explanation of service. They're going to say I'm interested or I'm not interested. Or I'm interested but I object. Which is why you need to learn the five steps to overcome an objection that we teach. You follow me? If they're interested, it initiates a seven-touch follow-up. Okay? Now, so let's stop right here and let's say, I'm going to be mapping out my day to day. Here's what I'm going to do. This is, what I, this is the four things I need to do. Number one, I'm calling on three to five new money people. That could be a current client that we're asking to bring referrals. Okay? The highest point of energy to ask for the referrals is in the beginning of the relationship. So right here. 
So it's right in the very beginning. Hey, if this has been good for you, who else do we need to be helping? Follow me? So every day I come in, I could be calling on current clients asking for referrals. I could be calling on past clients to say, hey, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Stay in touch. I want to be your person, right? I could be calling on strategic partners. And the strategic partners, hey, let's, let's partner up. Let's do something big together. Let's make it happen. Or I could be calling on direct consumers, people that I think are, are interested in our services. These are the four types of people that, we, that I could be calling on. So every day I come into the day, I go straight to my hit list, and I'm calling on bam, 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 bam. I'm calling on these three or four people every day, okay? Now, I'm also going to call on three to, three to five people that are in my farm club. So number two thing I'm going to be doing, oops, number two, is I'm going to call on three to five people that I call the farm club. The farm club are people who have indicated interest, but we have not closed. They are interested in our services. How many touches are we going to go? Seven to 15. We call that million dollar follow up. And we're going to keep going until we get your attention. So let's say Aaron calls in one day, says he's interested in having a coach. He emails in. We're going to reach out to him, call him, hopefully quickly. We're going to build some rapport. We're going to, we're going to share, we're going to do some discovery. We're going to share our services. If he says, okay, I like it, but I haven't seen enough to take action, we're going to invite him to, we're going to push him to something for free. Hey, Aaron, come sit in one time for free. See if you like it. He comes that day, he says, I like it, but I'm not ready to sign up. He's in the farm club. Now we're going to start a series of touches. So we're going to follow back up. Aaron, it seems like you want to do this, but you're stuck on one thing. What is this one thing so we can go ahead and attack it? We're going to work on overcoming his objection. Now, let's say he says, you right, I'm ready, I'm ready for a coach, sign me up today. He's now a new client. Within the first 30, 60, 90 days, what are we going to be asking him? Aaron, you made a big decision in your life to commit to your future. This is going to be a good decision because you're going to make a whole lot more money now. We want to help your friends make more money too. Who else can you bring to class? Now he brings me three more people. Everybody see how that worked? He started where? On my head list. He emailed in. We don't know if we're interested in him or not. We had a conversation with him. We pushed him to something. He then moved to our farm club. He said yes. After he, he said yes, he is now a new client. Or what I call the net promoter. Net promoter. And a net promoter is a person that we want him out there promoting us. Listen, when a person buys a new house, gets a new agent, gets a new lawn care person, gets a new financial advisor, if, if it's good and it's new, it's fresh, it's novel, they want to go tell people. Right? I'm going in a new direction here. Things are looking up. So I may, there may be three to five of these people you want to spend time with that are new. Okay? So Clay's on our sales team now. And here's what I told Clay. The easiest money you're going to make is go straight to the current monster producers who are in the program, who are engaged. Say, Vicki, who else do we need to be helping? Can you bring them to class with you? You follow what I'm saying? That's easy. Let, they're going to do the work for you. Your best client should be going and telling other people how great it was. So what you do is you call on them. They bring them to class. You spend time with them. You get them excited. You get them to a point. Say, come on, go on this journey with us. So look at my high value. Look, I've got 15 high value activities to do today if I just follow my system, but I'm not done. There's one other thing. So this was number three that I'd be doing every day. Number four that I'd be doing every day is I'd be spending time with my biggest clients. So let me put our top 10 or what we call our top 25, and I'm going to spend time with three of those today. Anybody see the system we're talking about here? So is there, so basically I come into the day, what have I got? I got my hit list, three to five new people. I got my farm club, three to five people who's indicated interest I'm trying to close. I got my new clients I'm spending time with, getting them to a better state. And I got my top clients where I'm saying, hey, who else can we help? What do we need to be doing? Let's do something together. Now what I do is I constantly have something in the future where I'm prom promoting events, activation, parties, you understand what I'm saying? So I'm constantly pushing people to things so we have something to push people to, okay? All right, let me stop right here and take the questions that you have on these, one of these three or four things. Which part are you struggling with the most? Okay, Antoinette? Yes. 
What I would tell you is we exhaust every way we can. We're going to go every which way. And I made this mistake. We, we, we had worked on a person over in uh, Franklin at one time. Her name is Renee Voda. She's one, a good close friend of mine. She's in Monster Producer now. But she was at, we were trying to get her into a program. And we went everything we could. Face to face, text message, video, follow up email. And I was doing a big training for Coldwell Banker. And I said, Renee, how many different ways have I touched you in the last three weeks? It was kind of awkward the way it came out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but she said, Coach, you use everything you got. Listen, I use everything I got to get a person's attention. Right? Now, when I say everything, what do you think I mean? Let's get very clear. Teresa, what do I mean? Yeah, she's real estate. Uh-huh. I mean, they know her. That's right. Do you know them? Do you pull up at the door? Do you um, show up at their office? Bring them something? Now, what's come up on my hit list a few times is D.R. Horton. D.R. Horton is a national home builder. Several people have said, we want to get you with D.R. Horton. We want to get you in to speak to D.R. Horton. We want to get you to the sales for D.R. Horton. So here's what I start asking. Who do I know at D.R. Horton who could get me access to the person who makes the decision? Teresa, do you know anybody that works at D.R. Horton? Your husband. That's right. Oh, yeah. See, I just found that information out this weekend. So now I, now I know multiple people that know people at D.R. Horton. So here's how this would start. If I want to speak to D.R. Horton or speak to the sales team, where do they start? On my hit list. I, I don't cold call people, typically. I start asking, who do I know that could get me in there? So I go to Teresa and I say, can you ask your husband, Ray, to introduce me to the head salesperson there, right? And vouch for me, I need you to fight for me, that I'm a person that can help them. Will you do that for me, right? So they make the introduction, we make a phone call. Hey, I'm Coach Burt, I'm coaching Ray's wife, okay? She's high on our program, also uh, Julie Arnold's daughter works there, I think at DR Horton, right? Is that right? Okay, she just left, so that ain't gonna work for me. What? Yeah, so Julie, Julie's the lender. But here's my point. Now I know what? See how that works? Hit list. Now, that's called the connector strategy. So what I do is I start saying, who knows? How can I get in there? Now, let's say I go to that person who's over the sales team, and we have, by the way, and we did not pick up any traction. But it's not their fault we didn't pick up any traction. Whose fault is it? It's our fault. You know why it's our fault? Because we ain't stayed in their face enough. We haven't gone hard enough. We haven't tried multiple strategies. What I could say is let me come down and speak to those people for free. Give me one sales meeting with those people for 35 or 40 minutes on me. I'll pay for it. Right? That's called the showcase event. Now, you see how all these things are tying together now? So what I'm doing, so what we haven't done, so I may do a video. I may do a testimonial. A testimonial. I may have somebody pick up the phone and call them. I may call my best client and have them call them. I'm going to use every strategy I can to get their undivided attention. Because, let me just say this, it's very critical. Do you have conviction in your product or service or not? Do you think you can help change a person's life, yes or no? Then why would you quit after one or two times? See, I believe in my message. I know it can help people. Why would I go one or two times and then quit? So thank you for reminding me. Okay, Clay, you need to put that on your hit list. See, if I'm training Clay right, he don't need me to tell him to do that. He hears it and takes action because he's hungry. If he wants to make commission dollars, any, per, any lead that comes up, he ought to be thinking, I'm on it. We already got two contacts. We got Teresa and we got Julie Arnold. We got their lender and we got an agent who's married to one of their best people. Why wouldn't we work that lead? Everybody see that? But, but what I'm saying is I'm going to work that lead through my system. I'm going to start them on my hit list. I'm going to make contact. I'm going to explain. You see what I'm saying? Then I'm going to follow up, but I'm going to go every, and I'm going to go seven touches. And once I go seven touches, I'm going to say, have you noticed how hard we work to earn your business? Has anybody else worked this hard? Okay. All right. Somebody had a question over here on this side. Do you have a question? All right, great question. Here's what I want you to think about. These people over here, 
you have most likely really got them to a much better state. You love working with them, they love working with you. So and it's, it's almost crossed over to we're not a salesperson trying to sell you something. Now it's a partnership. It's a relationship. We're sold on each other. We're friends. So I'm not calling you to sell you anything else. I'm just calling you to see what's going on in your life. Like my top 25 are some of my best friends. They'd fight for me in the market. I'd fight for them in the market. We call each other and talk about kids and family and whatever, right? But so, so, so it's because I've got them to a better state, though. So I highlight my top 10 clients, and I really get them to a better place, and I'm constantly thinking about them. Like, how can I touch base with them? What can I say to them? What can I invite them to? You see what I'm saying? And I just stay at top of mind with those 10 people in a frequent state. So you're, not, you're past the point of selling people anything. And I think selling is just partnering with people. you got a solution to their problem. If I could solve this problem for you, would it be valuable for you, yes or no? And if so, you're going to exchange money for my value. Okay? Now, so when we think, of, so here's what that looks like. It looks like what I just said. Here's our skill set. Here's your problem. Here's my skill set. Here's your problem. But what if I don't know about your skill set? What if I don't even know you exist? What if I don't know what makes you different than everybody else? What if I don't even know that you're there? So it's your job to do what? Call on me and tell me. Okay? So I'm going to take real estate, for example, because we've got some real estate people in here, mortgage people. Here's how most people run their business. They do a little bit of marketing, a little bit of advertising, get a few clients, and then they wait on people to come in. Does that sound like real estate people? Here's what I would do. If I'm in Murfreesboro, number one, I'd call 50 of the most influential people in Murfreesboro. And I'd say, look, I've admired your success for a long time. At some point, you're going to buy, sell, build, or finance real estate. When you do, I don't want you to think of anybody else but me. And I know you may have somebody you're working with, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to earn that business. I'm going to stay in your life and add value to you. And anytime you buy, sell, build, or finance real estate, I want you to come to me. Okay? Now, I'm going to stay in your life like a true professional does. I'm going to follow up with you like a true professional does. I'm not going to annoy you or bother you. But just out of curiosity, has any other real estate agent ever asked you for your business like this? I've lived in Rutherford County for 21 years. And I can count on one hand the number of real estate agents that have ever asked to represent me. And I buy and sell millions of dollars of real estate. Commercial, long term, short term. I'm building a $2 million building down the street. Very few agents have ever called on me to say, what do I have to do to earn your business and represent you? I've had no attorneys call on me. I've had very few mortgage people call on me. You know what they've all done? They've assumed. Well, I know he does all of his business with Tommy Davids, and I know he's good friends with Brandon Burks. I know he does this. Well, what if something comes along and they can't handle a deal for me? Could, could you be that person that handles it? Yes or no? We call on people every day. They're in the core coaching program. We don't know that they're in the core. They say, I'm in a coaching program. I say, are you satisfied with that program? No, I don't like how they talk to me. I don't like how they treat me. If we could be intense and positive with you, would you consider joining our program? Matter of fact, I've been looking for another program. Great. Let's go ahead and get you into ours. That makes sense? Now, I'm telling you that because it's so reactive. You follow what I'm saying? It's such a reactive model. My, what I'm trying to teach you is to go from defense to offense. If I go to church at New Vision Church and I'm a real estate agent, every one of those people, I ought to be representing all, the, all those people. There's 7,000 people go to church there with me. I'd, I'd be the real estate agent for all of them. I want to represent everybody. So my mindset is, let me call on people, and there may or may not be opportunity here, but I don't know until I call on you. Does that make sense? I learned this from an attorney in West Tennessee, in Jackson, Tennessee, I went to high school with. He went on to be a state senator. He called me one night, and he took me to dinner. And he said, you and I have been friends for a long time. I said, I said since we were kids. He said, uh, have I ever let you down on anything? I said, nope. Have I always been there for you? Yep. He said, look, I know you use attorneys when you do these big deals with companies. And he looked right square in my face as we're eating a big steak. And you know what he said? Why don't you use me? And you know what I said? I don't know. You know what I said? Because you never asked me. I said, the next big deal I do, you got it. And I began to give all, him all of my contracts. He handled every one of my contracts. All he had to do was come to Tennessee. All he had to come to the middle of Tennessee, feed me a decent steak, 
and ask me a question. Why aren't you using me? See how easy that was? He taught me a lesson though. He taught, I ought to be doing that. You ought to be doing that for people. Why am I not representing you? Now, some people, sometimes people are going to say, look, I've already got my person, but thank you for being right there. Because sometimes my person can't do it and I could refer you. I could, send, I could not use you but still feed you business. You do know that, right? What if somebody calls me and says, look, I'm buying some property in Coffee County. I don't know anybody in Coffee County. Who do I need to use? The first name I'm going to think of is the one that stays in my face the most. A little piece of real estate. I'm going to go call this person. That person can help you. Everybody, everybody see how that works? So what I'm trying to do is create these series of actions, and it would look like this. What I'm trying to do is create a series of actions every day that increase my probability of selling something. Because I do believe this is just a game of probability. You with me? For every 30 people I talk to, there's going to be 4.8 people that are going to be interested. There's not a person in this room, including me, talking to enough people, right? Generating enough interest every day. And we're, so what we're doing is we're playing a very reactive ball game. I'm trying to get you in a mindset of this. Every day I'm working a system. Every day I'm chopping wood and carrying water. I don't know when it's going to come for, for, to, for, to, uh, tuition, fruition. I don't know what's going to come to fruition. I don't know. Okay? But it starts small and then it just generates to something else. Everybody, everybody with me here? It starts small and then it turns into something else. I'm working on a deal with Farm Credit right now to coach all their operations people. Would that be okay if y'all, if I coach your ops team? Well, let me tell you, that don't, that don't magically happen. I didn't just cold call Farm Credit to Mid-America and say, hey, can I coach all your ops people? It starts by me doing a showcase event, which is where I speak to the group. Maybe it's free, maybe it's paid. From that, there's interest that's generated that leads to a discussion. Hey, there's two or three things we need help on. How can you help us in this area? Okay? Hit list. Have a conversation. Explain the services. Farm club. Got to get a few people involved to make the decision. Let me talk to all of them. Touch, touch, email, phone call, text message, video. Right? Next thing you know, we get closer and closer and closer till we got a deal. Everybody see that? Now, once I get the deal, what's my number one objective? Get them to a better state. If we get them to a better state, what do they go tell other people? That, that creates the referability. What if they end up in my top 25? All these people talk to each other. So let's say I win Art Whaley over. Art Whaley's out there talking to other bankers. He's like, look, we brought Coach Bird in. Our operations unit got a, a lot better. We were able to sell millions of more dollars because of this. Guess what? Guess what started happening? Our phone starts ringing with other banks. It says, hey, we need you to coach our operations people. Everybody see how that works? It's a cycle. But most people don't stay in the game long enough. Okay? What's your question? What is, in real estate, what is an example of like a showcase? Great example. Showcase is any event where you host people to come together to harness energy. Mix and mingle. Uh, I, I like to say the three types of showcase events. There's education showcases. This is where I bring you together and teach you something. Yes? I just taught a financial university class. Yes. That's great. And I got four solid See, that's a showcase. See, that's a showcase. Yep. Yeah, any, showca any showcase is where you can get in front of a group of people and position yourself as an expert. So it could be an education showcase. That's an education showcase. I'm, and, and, and I call it, it's like bait. It's back-end selling. I'm going to teach them Financial Peace University. While I'm teaching them, they're going to go, we like this girl. Then you say, look, I'm, all, I'm a real estate professional. If you guys ever need anything, you call me. That's an education showcase. And, and, and entertainment showcase is we get them together and let them have fun. We get people together and we let them have fun. But we're the one bringing people together. 
And then there's the third one, which I call edutainment. And edutainment is where I mean, let them have fun and let them be serious. So, you know, this weekend, I did this, or the last couple of days I've been in Memphis doing this big mortgage conference, and they asked me to MC the event. And I'm like, I don't want to do it. I want to come in and speak. I want to coach. I want to go home. A person in Monster Producer was on the committee. She said, I'm telling you, you need to do this. Because when you're emceeing the event, you're able to get up in front of everybody all three days. They're going to constantly see you. And against my own will, I did it. But I laughed and I joked and I had fun with people. And more people came up to me and said, we need to bring you to speak to our company. This is great. We loved it. You had a lot of good energy. We'd come to your session. What it did is it gave me the stage. And when I had the stage, I can be in front of the people. Everybody follow what I'm saying here? So although I didn't want to do it, I did it because that's a showcase opportunity. Okay? Now, so what I do is I create opportunities every month for people to come to that I'm pushing people to. Come to this event. Come to this event. Be in part of this. Come down to the hangar tonight and, and pick out your airplane. Come to this. Come to the party at my house. Be involved in this. Come to this class. What I'm doing is I'm constantly pushing people to something to keep that network, okay? So here's the categories. Hit list, farm club, new customer, top 25, showcase connector. Now, in a given day, when you're working these strategies, what do you think is going to happen? Good things are going to happen. There's no way you can be doing all of these strategies and not generate new business. No way, okay? Now, what else do I use? So I would call these primaries, and when I mean primaries, I mean these are things I do every day. Hit list, farm club, new customers, top 25. Hit list, farm club, new customers, top 25. Everybody see that? Now, let me go back to Travis. Travis, have you called on some people that said they were interested, but you have not closed them? Okay, they're in your farm club. So my next question is, how are you going back to those people? How are you getting their attention? How are you compelling them to schedule an appointment? How, what do you say when you get in front of them? You see what I'm saying? See, now they're just sitting there waiting for something to happen. He's, he's got to go back and constantly follow up. An object at rest stays at rest unless acted on by an outside force. The outside force is you. So go back to Bill. Bill, somebody comes in. in the, you call it a dojo? Go, it comes in the dojo. They like it, but they didn't take action for whatever they left. What I would be interested in is what's the follow-up to those people. I call that rehash. I'm trying to rehash that energy. So it may be, hey, you didn't see enough to take action. Why don't you come back in a second time on me? I tell people, if you didn't see enough to take action today, a monster producer, I'll let you come back again. You see what I'm saying? I just want them in the door. Now, when we're creating this, what we're doing is we're following up. So I'm going to go seven touches. Travis, if he's doing what he's been taught, should go seven touches with a series of different touches. Maybe he used a client testimonial. Maybe he used a video, a text message, a phone call. He's using different touches to go back to them. Okay? One of the things he may say is perfect time of year. Perfect time of year for us to come out and evaluate your yard. It needs fertilizer. This is a key, key moment. Let's not miss this window. I believe we lose 10% of momentum every day we don't take action. Okay? Now... We teach a course on how to overcome objection. When I get on the phone with the person, for the most part, I can overcome their objection. And I use, a, I use a cycle that I use. I listen, I acknowledge, I isolate, I validate, and I challenge them. And I decide if I think it's a legitimate complaint or if it's a, if it's a complaint, I just keep going. I act like I didn't even hear it. If it's a true objection, they'll come back to it again. And so when you're calling on people, well, we're just real busy. You know, I don't know when we can get out here or when we can meet you. No worries. I can come in the morning. I can come in the afternoon. I can come at night. Be happy to come on the weekend if that would help you. I just know this is a real critical time, and I don't want to miss this window to get the fertilizer on the yard like we need to. Okay? Matter of fact, I rode by your yard today. There's three things that I think you're missing. I'm sitting out in front of, in front of your door right now. You got to have... Okay? Now... When you're thinking about this, so, so, so what I'm doing is I'm using primary strategies, and that's all these, in conjunction with each other. So tonight, we're doing this event down at the airport. 
this visioneering where I try to get you to think bigger. I'm going to let you get on the private jets and look at them. Which, where does it follow my system? Showcase. Showcase. But we could invite people outside of Monster Producer. You do realize that, right? See, I could say you may not be in Monster Producer, but I'm going to do a little session about how you see time, how you get over what people think about you, right, and how you drive revenue so you can have one of these. If you're out there and you're not a monster producer, it's okay. Just email Clay at CoachBird.com. I'll get you a seat. I'm just looking for any way, any way in the world to pull people in. Everybody with me? I'm looking for any way to pull people in. Hey, I'm going to be in Knoxville on this date. Why don't you come to Monster Producer one time for free? Why don't you invite three friends? Why don't you invite all your real estate agents or mortgage people? Okay? If you guys are in that program, why, why are you not inviting one of your key strategic partners to come with you? And you guys learn together and use it as a way to tie up that relationship tighter. Does that make sense? That's what Julie Arnold's doing, which is what I respect about her. She wants all of her people around her that's in her immediate network coming with her. You know why? Locks that relationship up tighter. Y'all are learning together. It's a very good move. Okay? Now, I do use secondary strategies. And my secondary strategies would look like this. Th that means I'm also using these strategies as part of the selling system but they're, they're peripheral strategies. Database, which is a weekly outbound hit to clients or prospects. Social media, where I'm doing Facebook Lives, videos. My person of interest strategy. On Monday night, I'm hosting an event to get a person uh, elected for city council here in Murfreesboro. You know, you know what kind of people come to those events? Influential people. You know why influential people come to political events? Because they want to know who's elected to local officials. You need to know your local mayor, local city council. What if you want to do something one day and you need their help? How do you get their help? You help them get elected. You understand what I mean? So what I said is I said, I'll host it at my house, which gives me an opportunity to call on all the wealthy people in Rutherford County and say, look, I'm hosting this event. We're trying to get my banker, Ronnie Martin, elected. He's going to be great for the city. We're having a party at my house on Monday night. Why don't you come on over? You follow what I'm saying? Why would, why would I not do it? So what you got to start thinking is you got to start thinking is, look, what if we end up doing business with some of these people, which we could. What if we rekindle an old flame that we used to have with each? What if we open a new door? You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, my mind is like open to the world. It's like, how do we get people in? What can we do? How can we help them move their ball down the field? So that would be part of a person of interest strategy. By the way, you become mayor of Rutherford County and you're a home builder. What does that mean you know? Our mayor is a home builder. You know that, right? What does he know that most of us don't know? He knows the housing market. He knows every new development that's coming in. He knows where every single commercial thing is going to be built before you do. Would that give you an advantage? Yes or no? Yeah, absolutely it would. That's a good move. That's a person of interest strategy. You think you have more visibility when you're the mayor or less visibility? You think you have more opportunity or less opportunity? More. Now, you've got to deal with what comes along with that. You may not want to deal with all the problems that come along with it. Strategic partnership, okay? All right, so let's finish you up on these things. Here's my, here's my, here's my goal for you every day, guys. If you say, Coach Burt, help me map out my day and use my planner. How many people are using their planner? Good for you. Thank you very much. I'm so proud of you. Okay, if you're not using that planner that you got, it is not an ornament. It is not something that sits on your desk and you look at it and go, boy, I sure do think I should use that. <laughs> Listen, if I'm using it, you need to be using it, okay? We got little ones. We got big ones. I think we're using little ones now or smaller ones. Some people like the small ones. Some people like the big ones. It's real simple to use, guys. Don't complicate it. On one side, you map out your schedule. You time block. On the other side, you put your hit list, farm club, new clients, top 25, and you go to work. And when you show up at your office, here's what you do. Bam. Here's what I've got. Here's what i got to do today. From 9 to 11, I'm hitting these people. I'm calling on these people. I'm following up with these people. And you're working this system. So what does it look like? Every day, three to five people on my hit list. Give me a definition of hit list. This is your little check for retention. What does a hit list mean? New money. Can I get that new money by calling on old clients? Yes or no? 
Yes. Can I get that new money by, 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 by upselling someone? Yes or no? Can I get that new money by calling direct to a consumer that I think needs it? Yes or no? Strategic partnership? Yes or no? Asking for a referral from a current client? Yes or no? I can get new money everywhere. I create concepts that create new money. Retreats. Do this. Do this. Have this. Purchase products. Buy books. Get my online academy. I create concepts that helps generate new money. Okay? So, farm club, give me a definition. All right, people who have shown interest in our product or service, but they have not committed. How many touches are we going to go? Listen, if you don't have conviction in, in selling, here's what's going to happen. Those people are going to run all over you. Do you believe in your product or service or not? And when they give you some little lazy excuse, you need to combat that. You'd be like, come on, are you serious? So farm club, of people that have indicated interest, we're going seven. How many of you are not going seven touches like you should? You're going a few touches. Okay? Statistics say 80% of the time it takes seven to 15 touches. All right? What about new clients? We call those, what's another word for new clients? Net promoters. What's our goal with those people? Yeah, love on them. Get them excited. Get them inviting other people. You follow what I mean? So, so now I'm spending time with my current clients. New clients, my prospect, all right, my top 25. Give me an example of that. 25 biggest relationships. I talk a lot in Monster about the top 10. Spending time with your top 10 people that will send you three, five, six referrals. Okay? I mean, really spending time. And then I've got social database events. That's the showcase. And, if, and I really encourage you, you need to be doing events. Even if you're doing four people over at your house or four people at dinner or you're doing this, you need things to push people to. Constant promotion to something. If, if I sold real estate or if I'm in the home inspection business or whatever, I would try to find a way to get back on their property. Okay? So, so let me give you an example. I sold your house. I helped you sell your house. I helped you get into the new house. I'd like to throw a party for you when you get in that new house. Let's have a barbecue. It's on me. You invite 20 of your best friends. I'd love to just come over and celebrate with you because it's a big moment. Now I'm back on your house. It's, there's an emotional connection between you and I. There's a, bra there's a brainwave connection between you and I that's a whole lot better than a little closing gift. You follow what I'm saying? There's an emotional connection. You and I have spent... When those people come to my house this weekend and they're inside my house with me and my wife, there's a much stronger, deeper connection with each other than people that don't. You follow what I'm saying? You, sh you need to be finding ways to build this emotional connection with your people that is much deeper than just a product or service you're building where they can really line up. Here's what I found. The people I take with me on the bus, you've, you've gone with me on the bus, right? Or you've been, you went to Knoxville with me. But you, okay. The people that go on the airplane with me, the people that spend concentrated time with me where we can just spend time learning about each other's lives the referability goes through the roof. I take three or four people on an airplane with me and they come back and they tell as many people as they can. They bring us more people. They're fighting for us in the market. You know why? It's an emotional connection. We get to spend a full day together with each other. We get to know each other at a deeper level. Kathy, you went with me, you, right? We get to talk about life and success and business and how do we get better? How do we, how do we, how do we go to another level? So there's a, there's a deeper meaning there. You should be doing the same thing, okay? Any questions about this system? Yes? Where do you keep your master list? I keep my master list is we have a Monster Nation list that is a spreadsheet that's updated every single month of every single person in the program. Contact information. Yep. Yes. And we have lead trackers. Lead trackers are every person that indicates interest, their phone number, their email of how we're working them. So we're tracking that information to make sure that we're following up and touching seven touches. But, we're, but there's no randomness to what we're doing. It's very specific. Yeah, I go, I go back to the people that has a, I think has the highest probability of closing, number one. For example, this month, Clay just started with me. Clay's job has been called Current Monsters. Make sure they're enrolled in the class. Make sure they've signed up and then ask them a specific question. Who else can you bring with you to class? Everybody with me? That's a specific role. We've got to get you to class before us to help you. 
If you come to class, you always feel better when you leave. Who else can you bring to experience this? That's a lead for us, okay? That's a very specific job going right through there. Okay. Yep. So for people like Rachel and I who kind of get scared, yep. problems often, uh-huh. we have a very specific product. Uh-huh. And so we're trying to figure out how to get people to come to class and get the experience that they need. Yep. And so we have a very specific product. Yep. Yep. No, I, I think it's, I think, I, I, I just want to go where the fish are biting. Yeah. Okay, well, let me give you an example. We have a financial advisor, lives in my hometown of Woodbury, Tennessee. He goes down and eats breakfast at Hardy's every morning. And you know why? People, uh, old men go down to Hardy's and eat breakfast every morning. He sits around and talks to them. And they sit around and they say, you know, they find out a little bit about him. The other day, the other day he picked up $800,000 of investable money at Hardy's. You know why? Goes down to Hardy's every morning. Those older men have accumulated some money. They said, look, not comfortable with how much money I'm getting on my investments. Would you, would, if I gave you a check for 400000 right now, would you invest it for me? Why? He goes where the fish are biting. So I, here's the question I would be asking. Who, who, where do I go to get in front of people that live in rural areas that would purchase land, farms? Where do they go? Do they go to fish fries on Friday night? Do they, do they go somewhere on Saturday mornings? Do they go to breakfast somewhere? Who sells to them? Okay. Now, here's another example. In my hometown of Woodbury, there's one little real estate agent, one little exit agent that pretty much dominates that whole little area. So he knows all the little deals going on in Woodbury. Those are all rural people living in rural places. They live on farmland. I'd build a relationship with that cat. And I'd say, look, when you're buying land out there in the world, listen, and you can't get it financed through a traditional bank, come to me. I want to go where the fish are biting and get in front. So that would be the question I would ask you. How are you getting in front of those influences? I'd start with five or ten, and I would build little feeder systems. What five or ten people can feed me leads, feed me deals? Okay? Bill? Hunters Club. Hunters always look for like rural land. Hunters, yeah, like a hunters club, yeah. They're looking for land. Yeah. Listen, we had a guy, monster, we had a guy, monster producer, come over and buy a bunch of land in Shelbyville. He couldn't get it financed through a traditional bank. He lives in Louisiana. He's like, man, I'm trying to get this deal done. Jason Melton eventually got the deal done for him. I think he was working at Farm Credit when he got the deal done for him. But, but I knew Jason because he had went to high school with him, and I said, call this guy. I think he can do it. That's kind of how that works. Then they all talk to each other. So if I'm selling real estate, I want to know who's purchasing real estate, where do I go, how do I get in front of these people, how do I stay plugged into these people. That's the kind of questions I want to know. Okay, any other questions? Okay, do you, is there, can everybody walk out of here with a little bit more clarity about how to work a system versus be random? And if it's not going to be you working it, and you got employees, they need to be working this system. They need to be, like if I'm a recruiting agents under me, they all need to be working the system. It doesn't need to be random and sporadic. It needs to be, hey, 9 o'clock every day we're prospecting. Who are we calling on? Bam, 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 bam. We're working them through this cycle. This is a pure selling system, okay? This may be a course you have to go through a couple times to, to get it, but listen, I've been using this system for years, and it's typically shown a 100 to 200% increase every year. Every year. Every year I've been in business. Yes? Why do you choose the 9 to 11? Great question. I, I choose 9 to 11 for one reason. I don't think people want to prospect. I don't think they wake up going, I can't wait to prospect today. So I just get it out of the way first thing. I, I, I do. Now, that doesn't mean that's the only time we prospect. It's just a dedicated time every day. I don't care if you choose three to five, four to six, as long as you do it. And I do think it needs to be two hours a day. If you want to prospect from one to three, fine by me. I've always heard it's because that's, you know, if you do it first thing, then other, your day doesn't get in the way. Yeah. You know? Like in typical business, yeah. all those fires are put out. And so if you do it first thing, you've, you've done it before, all the fires Yep. After they get off work and not from 9 to 11. Yeah. So it's... You could, yeah. Or you could... 
Yeah, she does real estate. You could text her from 9 to 11 and say, look, I'm going to be calling you this afternoon between 4 and 6. Or you call me between 4 and 6. I, I worked with an agent in South Carolina when I first started coaching. He was doing 135 transactions a year. And he prospected every morning between 9 and 11. He showed up every day, 8 a.m. He was in his office. He met with his team. 9 a.m. he went in that door, locked the door, went in that room, locked the door, and got on the phone every day. And I just watched him work, and he was so disciplined. And here was his philosophy, and I'll end on this. I prospect in the morning, and I solve the world's problems in the afternoon. That was his philosophy. That's, so I adopted that. We prospect in the mornings. Now, that doesn't mean from 3 to 5 we're still not calling on people. We're still calling on people. I just guarantee we're going to get it in at least two hours a day. And I just keep our people disciplined to that because most people won't do it if you don't make them. Fair enough? Okay, we recorded this session today, so we'll put it back out in the Facebook group. We'll send it back out for you to watch it. If you have team members, they really need to watch it. When you hear me refer to the selling system at any time, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, so start using that planner. Start calling on new money every day. Start following up seven touches and keep it in a pattern, okay? All right, guys, thank you very much. Right over there.